The Korean Women's Association started as a social club founded by several Korean women in the early 1970s. The members aim to make a difference in the lives of others. Journey with us to see how this multilingual, multicultural agency began. Soldier Warnick is a retired teacher and a longtime board member of the Korean Women's Association. Soldier was born in 1942 in Japan. In 1947, Soldier's family journeyed back to her father's homeland in Korea. Soldier's mother, who was fond of books and education, started a bookstore once they settled in Taegu, Korea. This became the family business, and Soldier worked there throughout her youth, causing her to fall in love with reading and Western literature, which she inspired someday to teach. Soldier's passion for Western culture directed her to a college where she furthered her studies in English and fell in love with an American. I met Fred when I was in college. Uh, we had the uh, English uh, literature student had a class with the United States Information Service Center every Saturday, learning English conversation. And uh, that's when one day the Fred Warnick showed up and, and taught us about the American college life or whatever. So, um, that's how I met him first. Then he, um, we did uh, quite a bit of a study together with the other, you know, to our club members. But he, then he went to, back to, uh, to the state because he discharged. And then he came back after two years to Seoul, one of the first export-import company in Seoul. And that's we met again second time. That's when we really uh, fell in love with each other, I guess. <laughs> After marrying Fred in 1968 and living happily in Seoul, the couple had two daughters and decided they should be raised in the States. Soldier, having spent most of her life in Korea, experienced a tremendous culture shock when she arrived in Tacoma, Washington. I think the first month was when I came here. I was just sitting in the motel with the, struggling with the two girls and then crying every almost day. And then I thought I got to figure out, do something about these feelings. Soldier faced a situation similar to one that most immigrants face upon coming to America, including how to find employment and adjust to a different way of life. To shift her focus from her current circumstances into a positive outlet, Soldier decided to pursue her dream and become a teacher. I'm going to go see, maybe get a, some job, simple job, but it wasn't easy to get a job, you know, quickly. Leah Armstrong, a then Korean Women's Social Club member, heard of a well-educated Korean woman who had just settled in Tacoma and decided to invite Soldier to join their group. So she came to my, visit my house and, and then just talked about all about KWA and then just uh, say, come to join our club. So then next week, of course, I wanted to get to know them. So I went there and there's, a, you know, less than a dozen of women were there in small room. And uh, so we talked about it and then just... Uh, you know, we complete, We just, uh, I already felt home. So, sure, I'll be a member. And then they picked me as a something officer first day. Anyhow, that's how I got involved with the KWA. Once Soldier joined KWA, the club started to seek out other needed services to benefit the community. The social club, it was the beginning it was the 70s, early 70s was just social club. We got together once a month and then make a, bring Korean food. Each one of us bring their own specialty and then share the food and then just banging on the table with the chopsticks and then singing a Korean songs. And, and that's, that's all our homesickness and out, you know, it's just a, it's a party time, you know. And that was beginning. But then, late 70s, there are lots of Korean women who married the American GI. Um, 
and the servicemen and came to Port Louis, McCord Air Force Base. And then they, they, they came, but most of them that time didn't speak much language very well. And they didn't know how to drive. They didn't know how to wash, use a washing machine or dishwasher. They were just very, you know, poor to adapting this country. And so these uh, American husbands, they were frustrated, you know. So they kind of, uh, there is a lot of a kind of incident of uh, domestic violence. And then uh, we hear this uh, Korean woman has got beaten up. And then, so we started to help them. You know, then that's how we are opening our eyes that we can't help these women, poor women who doesn't, you know, know how to adjust to this country. And because we all ourselves went through that kind of difficult cultural shocks beginning. So that's how we end up doing this kind of, kind of so small social service, you know. The club members thought it was just a small social service, but it was much more. In 1996, we are family. KAA was created to provide expanded professional programs through the grants received from the city and counties and states and federal government plus private donations. Well, you know, I think we do, why we are doing social service is a lot to do with educating them. I mean, a lot of people, the new immigrants, they don't know how to do the way the, the way they are doing here. So we have to tell them, this is a, how it's done in this country. This is how you can get help. This is what you need to do to get help. It's always educating them, you know, even little thing to big thing. So it's just uh, that's a big part of service, actually. So, um, you know, we do have a citizenship class to become a U.S. citizen. We have ESL class. We have driver license class. It's all educating them. KWA is, uh, with these meal sites, got me to go in there. And if it wasn't for KWA, there wouldn't be a meal site, I guess. And I wouldn't have any place to go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday and have a good meal and good friends. So KWA has helped. 99% of my food that I eat is Asian. And in the last year and a half or so, I've lost over a hundred and some pounds. And also my cholesterol has gone down. <laughs> I feel much better. Well, I'm, I'm all by myself. I have no family or anything else. And so there's, I've got several friends down there that invited me to their home for dinners. And that's uh, their family. They are my family. The organization provided a family atmosphere to clients and staff alike. The board became familiar with individuals and their needs. In 1986, after seeing the growing importance for suitable housing among seniors, KWA applied for a grant that would allow them to start offering low-income housing. You know, if you have a means to get an apartment, whatever, it's no problem. But people who doesn't have a means to get an apartment, whatever, they just practically on the street. You know, they just, uh, so, there is so much those kind of people, seniors there now. So we thought we have to really figure out something to these house these low-income seniors. Since that time, the Korean Women's Association has expanded to provide nearly 200 units of low-income senior housing. In 1998, Pacific Villa opened and provided 25 units of senior housing in Tacoma. In 2006, Orchard Park opened 
and provided six units of single-family housing in Roy. In 2007, International Place opened and provided 55 units of senior housing for those 62 and older. In 2009, the Olympus Hotel opened and provided 49 units for disabled housing in Tacoma. In 2010, Senior City opened and provided 62 units of mixed housing and social services. KWA realized that after filling the need of providing both food and shelter to seniors, that health care needed to be addressed, as it was yet another critical need for our seniors. While they are coming to the nutrition program for lunch, and we noticed a lot of host seniors have a problem with the feet and toes and different things. And so we started to bring the nurses in and care those little simple things like that. And that, that made us to think that is we need to also, you know, just take care of the seniors' health. And that's how we got into the in-home care service. In 1986, the Korean Women's Association saw a need for health care among the senior population. They decided that providing in-home care would be an efficient way to ensure seniors could receive the assistance they needed to remain in their homes while enjoying a high quality of life. Now, KWA provides in-home care in 11 locations throughout 11 counties in western Washington. KWA makes it its mission to provide multicultural social services to meet basic human needs through education, socialization, advocacy, and support. Working for KWA has been a great joy because it's a, it's a great team of people who put the needs of the client first. My name is Gerald Smith. I'm a paraplegic with only one leg, and I get great service from KWA. Well, they help me do my give me breakfast in the morning, they do my dishes, do my floors, get me shower, get me dressed, get me mobilized, and help me clean up. KWA cares how people live. We believe that a home supports the dignity and comfort of each person. In addition to providing home care services, KWA also hosts an Alzheimer's daycare center where therapeutic exercises, counseling, games, as well as educational and nutritional seminars are offered. Uh, our KWA Alzheimer's clients, they do enjoy themselves. Even they don't speak, they're able to sing along with the uh, other clients. And when I see them, oh, it was just so uh, touching. And sometimes I do go in, watch them, how they do. And it is a sad how they have to go through that, but I'm so glad we had that program. KWA actively works to provide services for those who are affected by disease. Breast cancer. It's a potential disease for every woman, not just few women. And most women from the uh, Asia and all other countries, the minorities, have no insurance to detect the breast cancer. So the KWA, with uh, partners with the, uh, Fred Hutchinson, Cancer Research Center and Franciscan Health System. So provide to a uh, breast cancer navigator to the underserved minority women. Most important part of the breast cancer navigation program is to save a life for early detection of a breast cancer. Washington Health Benefits Exchange is a new way to sign up for health insurance. KWA works one-on-one -on -one to ensure individuals and families can enroll in a health plan that fits both their needs and budget. KWA is a pioneer with this movement, helping to educate their clients in many languages. We can just walk through them step by step to help them to register for the, their insurance coverage. And it's a shame that a country like this 
People die because they no, have no insurance. I have insurance now, like I think more comfortable with the insurance because now I know what it means exactly is the place that I need to go. My language is in Spanish and I have uh, all information in my language for that program on Obamacare. It's easy. I think now with KWA, with a partner with uh, Washington State that helps find the providers, and then it's going to be a really give all, all these uh, low-income families, and not just low-income families, any uh, families in the uh, in, uh, in the nation, and the peace of mind. That's that's uh, you know they don't need to worry about anymore. They don't need to worry about you know financially. I can pay for the medical bills, or I can pay for the insurance premiums or I can pay for the, any other things. And now they can go without thinking and they just go. And then prevention is another one. You know, they can now take care of their body with, before they get sick. And that's, that's I think that's a really high priority to prevention. Uh -huh. After expanding into housing and home care, KWA wanted to assist in making the process of acquiring American citizenship easier on immigrants. The process of gaining citizenship has changed exponentially since Sulja attained her papers in 1976 when she flew to Hawaii to take the U.S. citizenship test. And just in one hour it's done and then I got a citizenship. I think now I, there's so many more immigrants and the, the questions are more complicated and then People have to take uh, lessons or uh, study, particularly a lot of immig new immigrants that doesn't know anything about U.S. Uh, history or con constitution. They have to actually study. That's why KWA started the um, citizenship class. KWA citizenship program started in March 1997. It was a response um, to a growing need in the population to obtain legal services in becoming citizens. And since then, we uh, got federal and state grants that helped us provide our citizenship services mostly for free. And um, we have expanded our services and provide them in many different counties in Washington state. And we also assist people speaking a variety of languages, including Korean, Russian, Ukrainian, Cambodian, Vietnamese, Filipino, Samoan, and many others. And this citizenship class in the KWA does not only teach the how to take a citizenship class, the test. Before that, they have to learn English first. So we teach the basic English, and then plus their citizenship questionnaires and answers the questions back and forth. and. It, some people takes about a whole year to do that. Some people take six months. So, and um, then you will see that one of the students that actually not learned the citizenship class from me, and then they got the citizenship, and the first thing they called me, I am now U.S. American citizen. And you know, how proud they are and happy about becoming citizens. Paul Shin, a former senator of Washington state, was born in Korea and orphaned at age four when his mother passed away. Abandoned by his father, young Paul wound up sleeping on the streets and begging for food. During the Korean War, American soldiers took pity on the young man and made him the barracks boy. One day, when he was very lonely and missing his mother, he ran into the mountains and cried for her. Just then, he was approached by an American soldier who later adopted him. Senator Shin has a heart for giving back and has been involved with the Korean Women's Association's volunteer board for decades. On behalf of Washington State Legislature and the people of Washington State and also Korean Americans, you KWA, thank you. You did not disappoint me. In fact, uh, because of you, I feel so proud of you. I feel very pleased and happy to be like Korean America, like you folks are. And uh, to have this kind of motivation and uh, inspirational messages and to help those in need of it, this is a blessing to me. So, KWA, thank you. 감사합니다.
<laughs> I think uh, KWA, uh, while we started from small social club to the, you know, over 1,000 employees and $22 million budget a year after 41 years, it, they grew tremendously. And, and, and so you, so you feel while the KWA is growing, you feel like yourself is growing with them together. And uh, so always inspired me to be a better person, I say. And then also you get so much satisfaction that you, you think you are doing something, make a difference in other people's life. And that just make you keep going.